Hey, how's it going guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and in this video we're basically going to be looking at the RP9 V2 3D printer from Bob CNC, and some upgrades that I've done to it since the last video I basically talked about certain upgrades that I was going to do. And um, some of these are, or two of them I guess are kind of minor-ish. One of them is sort of major, I guess, and it's something that I didn't initially plan on doing, but I decided to do it, and it was kind of a little bit of a headache, but I am happy with the end result. So um, let's go ahead and talk about them. So the first one is something pretty simple, but basically when it comes to leveling this 3D printer, um, by default when you build it, the way you level it is by adjusting the left and right, um, basically threaded, uh, threaded rods of the Z-axis. and I will say that with enough calibration you can get it to where it prints relatively well and I have done all my prints up until now by using that. However, I like the ability to be able to adjust the four corners independently um, just to ensure that also um, it's not just even left to right and right to left but from front to back and back to front. And so what I basically went ahead and did was I swapped out the wood washers that were in place right here. I can actually show you guys what they look like. Well, these guys right here were basically under the four corners and so I swapped them out with springs. Luckily I picked this up off of Amazon a while back. It's just a random box of different size springs and um, yeah there was springs that fit the job. So if you guys are interested in picking this up I have used this for three printers now. I'll place a link in the description um, you know if it's something you're interested in. But basically again I took off the wood um, risers or spacers and put in place the springs and then I printed out, I'll actually take one off to show you guys, but they're basically just M3 nut traps and I screwed them on the bottom and they worked out perfectly so let's see if we can get this off. And here it is, just this little guy right here. Basically the nut just pops into place and it's got grooves to where your thumb can um, adjust it and tighten it or loosen it as needed. Originally I went with this guy right here, which is another uh, nut trap that I found on Thingiverse, but I had an issue with it being too wide and it was actually hitting the side um, as the bed moved back and forth. So as you can tell, this one is significantly smaller. Um, so this is something you're interested in doing, whether it's for this printer or another printer, I will do my best to place a um, Thingiverse file in the description to where you guys can go over, download and print this out if you choose to do so. Next, maybe you guys can see this already, and if you did watch my last video, you do know of um, the different upgrades I talked about, so I'm sure you can probably already see it. But one thing that I am strongly a supporter of is keeping electronics cool. And this goes all the way back from when I would mod Xbox 360s to run the fans at their full 12 volts of potential to keep the CPU GPU cooler. Well, similarly, um, these two boards are what power the whole 3D printer and they run extremely hot, especially the ramps board, the drivers, um, they get hot even with the little heat sinks they have and the fuses on here get extremely hot. So one way to increase the longevity of the life of your boards is to uh, basically install adequate cooling. I use these brackets on my uh, Fulgur Tech 2020 and they worked fantastically so I basically went ahead and reprinted them. Originally I was going to drill holes and mount a little bit bigger of a fan but that fan was actually damaged so I just went ahead and instead of reprinting them I just applied some hot glue and it is extremely solid it's not going anywhere um, and the fan is so light that the hot glue does a perfect job so now when I flip on the power switch the fan kicks on which I'm sure you can hear it it's pretty loud um, but this thing pumps out a ridiculous amount of air um, to and from the boards on here so that was an upgrade that I think is quite necessary whether you do this one or not um, I still think that you should add some kind of cooling to your boards. So um, again, I will try to place a link in the description to where you can find these brackets. Basically, they come in a huge variety of different sizes depending on what fan you want. You can, uh, on Thingiverse, customize them. And you can actually include holes on them already so you don't have to drill them out. Um, so that's an option as well. But definitely really happy with how that turned out. And um, yeah, I like that it's all wired up with a switch. So again, that way when it's plugged in and I kill the power, fan turns off, so that's a really cool thing. Now for the last one, which is actually the biggest um, one, in my opinion, is I converted this printer, the X and the Y axis, from using fishing string to basically move it back and forth to using your more standard belt. And uh, luckily I had an extra belt laying around. I didn't even realize I had enough until I went through some of my extra spare parts. But when I built the mostly printed um, CNC machine and I took it apart, I was 
luckily smart enough to keep a lot of the parts, if not all of the parts, so I had spare um, spare belt and I also had spare bearings. Basically these bearings over here, these guys right here, and they're, I think they're 605 or 608 or 508, I, I'll do my best to uh, put it in the video um, what exactly these are, but they're basically just like standard skateboard bearings and they're used for a lot of different things and I have a ton of these laying around. So for the um, uh, y-axis, I actually took some pictures because obviously you can't see what's going on down below, but I used a zip tie to attach it to the belt and another zip tie on the back to basically add tension to the belt. And then there is two of these guys um, down below. I have a picture so you can see it better, but basically the belt is wrapped around the um, stepper motor and then wrapped around both of the um, bearings to add, um, just to add tension so that way it does move back and forth. So I swapped out this guy right here from the threaded um, string attachment to this kind of ridged attachment. Um, again, I had extra of these from the CNC um, printer build, but um, yeah, so I just took that off, took this off, so that way it would um, actually attach to the belt. And then for here, I just basically used the holes that were already in this extruder um, build or placement to add a couple zip ties to the belt to give it tension. And then on the right side, I'll show you guys what I did. So on the right side, I had a little bit of an issue getting this to work accordingly, but basically there are two bearings under here, um, real small bearings. I don't know the names of them, but they were with my Fulger Tech uh, printer as well. They basically look like this this little guy. Hopefully I can get focus on it. So they basically look like this little guy right here, except that one of them is completely smooth, there's no ridges, and one of them has one lip. So I have the one with the one lip on top, and then the two, I mean, and then the one smooth one right below it. Um, hopefully that does make some sense to you guys. Basically, the smooth one's on the bottom, and there's a ridge one on top you can't really see. And I actually used one of the spacers from the... Um, from the bed that I replaced with the springs um, just on top right here and that basically just keeps the belt from lifting off or um, you know having the belt come off and that was one of my biggest issues was finding something on top that would work um, the belt kept popping off when I just used the bearings no matter what I tried so um, but this one worked out really well and it is tight and in place so I'll show you guys this thing moving around and in action alright so we have got the x-axis as so you can see, moving back and forth, we'll go ahead and move the y-axis, moving back and forth, and we'll go ahead and home them. And there you have it. Everything is working beautifully. And it wasn't really difficult to set this up. I will say, though, just um, basically that it took a little bit of thinking on how I wanted it to make this work just based off using parts that I already have because I always, you know, the goal is to spend as little extra as you need and just kind of recycle and reuse parts and use your printer to basically upgrade itself. And um, big thank you to the guys over on Bob CNC he has a little Google group forum where I actually was able to kind of reference some pictures of other people that had done this um, upgrade, if you want to call it upgrade. Basically, when I talked to Bob over at Bob CNC, he told me that um, there's not necessarily much of a benefit of using one over the other. Um, the belts are definitely easier to set up, which in my mind I guess would be a pretty big benefit. The fishing string was kind of a pain in the butt, um, but the fishing string, once I did set it up, did work extremely well. I didn't have any issues in terms of printing. Um, it was just, again, a pain to initially set up, and I felt like my string especially was kind of... Um, uh, dwindling over time. It seemed like it was getting a little bit more frail and I just figured I'd do this and then I would be good to go. Um, it does seem like it's a little bit louder using the belt over the fishing string um, but again I just wanted to use the belts just because I don't know it's pretty much what all printers are using and my other two printers are using it and I've used them for used belts for a long time and never had any issues so I figured what the heck I've got it might as well do it so um, I'm actually basically done with working on this printer. Um, one more time I'm going to have to level the bed um, and the last thing I would like to do is add one more fan to the extruder um, basically blowing on where the nozzles at just to help out with layer cooling um, because this is a PLA machine. I had initially talked about potentially upgrading it to have a heated bed um, which would be really easy to do basically just to upgrade the power supply along with adding the um, bed and the thermocoupler to monitor the temperature 
But um, because both my other printers can print ABS and I primarily just use PLA, I figured what the heck, there's not really any need to. Um, so I am not going to do that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in this printer, I'll place a link in the description. If you have any questions at all in regards to this printer, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below um, or suggestions and I will do my best to address them um, as they come in. So. Um, on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Once again, this is Daniel from ModBot. Thank you for watching, and I am out. Peace, guys.